Hi, this is Sheila and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've never been here before, welcome. I hope you will stick around and enjoy. This is a different sort of topic. Usually I'm offering tips or I'm giving you some advice on working out so that you can stay healthy and fit in your relationship. But this is a little different today. I'm gonna to talk about what fitness looks like after you have a baby. Some of the things that I went through, how I was able to continue to work out, what I did, and what I ran into with my pregnancy. So stick around, hopefully there's some lessons you can learn here. If you're a woman having a baby, thinking about having a baby, or recuperating after maybe having a C-section or something like that. And if you're the partner, significant other, or a spouse, here are some tips that um, you may be able to walk away with so that you can be in a more understanding place. You're not having a baby, I get it, but here are some takeaways. Just one personal story that um, may be helpful to you. So yeah, um, talking about pregnancy, having a baby, trying to maintain your weight, take care of yourself. There's just a lot for a woman to keep up with. So I'm just going to share my personal story and hopefully it can provide some insight and some thoughts for other people about things that they may be going through. And so my pregnancy was considered a high risk pregnancy. Number one, because I was older and number two, because I had fibroids. And so I had known that I had fibroids on my uterus. For those of you who don't know what fibroids are, it's just like muscular tissue on your uterus. Like it can be in very inside on the interior of the uterus. It can be in the actual muscles and then it can be on the outside. And so I already knew that I had, that I had fibroids because I had had issues with them before. Once I became pregnant, <laughs> um, it was a different sort of issue. So I had a couple of things going on. Um, otherwise, it was a very healthy pregnancy, but I was very anemic throughout my pregnancy. And so I was taking iron pills and lots of times you'll find that women are anemic anyway because of their menstruation cycle. Um, in my case, not only was I anemic, but I had these fibroids. And so as you're growing this baby, well, there's this blood supply that is growing too, because you gotta feed this baby that's growing, right? And I'm not talking about the nutrition part. I'm talking about the actual like blood vessels and that sort of thing and the actual growth. And so all of that is pumping into your uterus where these fibroids are too. And so they have a tendency sometimes to grow during pregnancy. Well, it turns out that my daughter was breech. And so, you know, um, her head was still up instead of turning down to get ready to come and be born, she never turned. And so one of the things that came up was my doctor said, well, hey, um, you know, what we can do is we can do this thing where we try to push the baby. <laughs> well, I mean, literally, they like push on your stomach to try to get the baby to turn. And so we scheduled a time for that. I mean, there's like a some sort of name for it. I can't remember what it's called, but it's got like some sort of medical name, it, like it's a procedure or something. But yes, they literally try to massage that baby on around, get that thing to turn. Well, my daughter wouldn't turn. <laughs> and my doctor said, you know, more than likely you've got fibroids in places that are just really blocking, you know, where she needs to move to. And so it just didn't work. It didn't work. So, um, so we go into having a C-section and we get that scheduled and we show up for the C-section and the anesthesiologist goes, yeah, I'm not doing any more tonight. I'm too tired. Well, here's the thing. When your anesthesiologist says that he's too tired and he's not doing anything else, guess what? You go, okay, I get it. I understand. We'll totally come back because the last thing I want is a tired anesthesiologist sticking any sort of needle in my back to sort of take away and dull some areas. Yeah, if you're tired, I'm good. You go home, take a break. So I came back the next day. My husband and I, we got there early 
and they did the c-section and so remember i had all of these um fibroids and you know they had given me the medicine and everything but it was so hard for them to cut through my uterus because of the fibroids that it wound up taking a long time and so they got concerned that the medication that they had given me was going to wear off and um it really got you know the time sort of became an issue and so they tried you know as they were cutting they tried to um to cut around the fibroid and they actually cut into one of the fibroids so then they tried to like sew it back up there so that it'd be okay but then that didn't work so then they realized they were just gonna have to cut the fibroid off like there was this whole process going on i'm lying there on one side of the sheet and there's this whole process going on and um so yeah so eventually she was born by c-section and so i had a healthy baby um, even though I ran into those sorts of issues. So what did my workout <laughs> look like during those nine months? So because I knew that I was high risk, one of the things I didn't want to do was I didn't want to continue doing really hardcore exercising the entire time I was pregnant. Um, and so I kept running through the first trimester. After the first trimester, I stopped running and committed to walking only. And so you had three months where I was continuing to run and I wasn't necessarily putting in a whole lot of miles. We're talking, you know, maybe three or four miles a day. And even then some of it was mixed with walking. So after that first trimester, I switched completely to just walking. And most of the time I was walking on a treadmill and sometimes I'd cut it up over the course of the day. So sometimes I wasn't even necessarily walking three miles at one time. I might do, you know, 40 minutes here and 20 minutes there sort of deal. It just depends, but that was how I did the rest of the um, time that I was pregnant. The only time that I did not work out was the last two weeks of my pregnancy and by then I was just sort of, you know what, I think I'm good. I'm just gonna keep eating Chick-fil-A sandwiches <laughs> and chocolate chest pie with Briar's vanilla ice cream, which is what I did. And during the course of my pregnancy, I gained around 23 or 24 pounds. I was really focused on making sure that I, um, you know, got in at least a glass of milk because I was trying to make sure I got my calcium in. I drank water like crazy. I drank water, like I kept up with how much, how many glasses of water I was drinking a day um, because I knew that that helped with just the fluid intake. Um, the development of the blood vessels just it was just a healthier way to approach things and I'm not typically a drinker So that was one of the things that I was really gung-ho about making sure that I was staying on top of Now, as I said earlier, I was um, also taking iron. I didn't do a very good t job of taking my iron um, during my pregnancy. And iron has a tendency sometimes to make you constipated anyway. So, you know, after a while that just gets old. So I wasn't really good about that. Probably should have been a little bit better. But yeah, so I had the milk thing going on. The vitamins I take every now and then. I had the iron going on, but I was really good about my exercise and I was really good about my water intake. And so, like I said, I gained around 23 or 24 pounds. And after I had my daughter, I did breastfeed. And I was back, by the time I went to my checkup, my six week checkup after I had, I was back down to my original pre-pregnancy weight. However, big asterisk here, okay? Yes, I was down to that weight, but I was very soft. <laughs> you know, like everything was just like, I had had abs before or stomach. You get used to your body feeling a certain way, right? And so when things change, you're like, oh, well, I'm back down to the weight, but everything's so soft, you know, because I hadn't been working out. And so it's not like I was real toned or anything. I hadn't done anything. I was just like recuperating from my C-section and breastfeeding and eating and doing those sorts of mommy things. That's what I was doing. And so even though my weight was back down, I was not yet in that healthy state and fit state that I was in before. And so really, um, after, after that, I did get back into the mode of working out and um, getting a little bit more healthy and fit. So, you know, the key things for me that helped me, you know, um, 
through my pregnancy, you know, sometimes I had headaches, but not a whole lot. I did take naps when I felt like I was tired. And um, I mean, I really did try to take care of myself. I, I really did. And that can be really hard when you're already working or you already have other kids and other responsibilities. But the key takeaways for me was really making sure that I was getting that rest time in, making sure that I was keeping my intake of liquids up, I was staying on top of that, and making sure that I continued to exercise throughout most of my pregnancy. And I think that's what helped me with a lot of things. Like I had no water gain, I had no preeclampsia. I really had um, a pretty easy pregnancy and I really think that those things that I did both before like I was already exercising and everything those things that I did before and those things that I continued to do during the pregnancy that they were key to helping me have um, the healthiest baby that I could because like I said it was already a health risk um, in terms of even having her my physician had said she really did not expect me to even carry to term because of the number of fibroids that I had. So I um, am thankful that I was able to have her and to make it through and I think really going in healthy and continuing to have that healthy attitude and being able to do some of those things and commit to continue to doing them throughout the pregnancy that that was what really enabled me to have a healthy daughter and then to sort of be able to bounce back even after having a c-section so if you are thinking about getting pregnant if you have fibroids if, you know if you've got other issues um you know uh, hopefully this story will just you know it's just one story to think about you know how things can go what things can happen and and it's just something to share so um much power to you if you're on that path i wish you well if you have any questions um any comments let me know i will also be doing a follow-up video to this about my hysterectomy because if you're trying to be healthy and fit and you've got some other issues going on that we as women sometimes have it can be hard to help to be healthy and fit um, under those circumstances so hopefully this um, video was helpful to you um, definitely you know check out my other videos that are more about losing weight and staying healthy and fit and making good lifestyle good lifestyle choices click the subscribe button below click the notification bell don't let me down stick around come back don't forget to commit to being fit and i'll be back with you soon